Brilliant. You know, we talk usually here about business growth and strategies and so on. And in many companies' lives comes the point where the growth of the company outpaces the skills of the people within the company. And it happens in different levels and sizes of companies, right? It happens when you're just starting and you're a solopreneur trying to grow your team. It happens when you're a small business trying to grow into a medium-sized business. It also happens to really, really large companies. It happens in every stage of company growth. You get to the point like, okay, so what are we doing next? And this is where my guest today, Benjamin Friedman, comes into the picture. He has an amazing company that is called Build, Scale, Grow, which makes sense with what he does. And him and his team come into businesses in that exact scenario, helping them to understand and to structure the company, the system, the processes, the mindset for the next stage of growth. So since I'm obsessed with scaling companies and learning about it, I'm truly honored and excited to have Benjamin on the show. There are two uh, scenarios that I see. One is more concrete and the other is around self-awareness. So concretely, uh, a company gets either a large seed round or a significant A round, and they realize that they've proven their concept, but now they need to build out a company to support it. And so they're really looking for help. Uh, of course, the founders are going to be heavily engaged in that process as well, but they're still very mindful that their expertise, their vision is around product and vision development. So they want to bring in someone like me. The other scenario is where the founder is looking at their calendar and thinking about their life, and they realize they're spending more than 20% of their time on company matters, You know, whether it's hiring, training, building a team, whether it's management issues you know, promoting somebody beyond their capacity. They're just too much involved in the infrastructure issues that they're not able to think strategically. They're not able to plan three steps ahead. It's just too much of a burden. And they realize this is the right opportunity. And the fractional option in both those cases is a great bridge because they may not be ready to fully commit both in compensation and in staffing to a full-time COO or full-time CFO, but they do want to get that expertise, have that strategic value and explore what that position would look like. What questions do I need to ask myself in my business in order to try to identify the gaps, the showstoppers, the hurdles, uh, the bottlenecks, right? Call them whatever you want to call them. That is stopping my company from growing faster, smoother, bigger. I think there's a couple ways to look at it. One is what is your original vision and to lay out your values uh, because those are going to set both the destination and the guardrails for how you proceed. Then it's looking at what is your company doing and how does that relate to the market, right? So Companies can be fantastic at whatever their product or service is, but if it's not a fit for the market as it is today or as it is in the future, then you're going to have to change, right? And then the third step is looking across your different teams and seeing what are your strengths and what are areas which you need to add resources. You know, you might have a, a wonderful product, but your sales is lacking or your marketing and sales is on point but you're bringing in so much business, you don't have the operational and financial infrastructure to handle that. So you have to figure out of all of the components of the company, which pieces are missing. The fourth element is to, to break it down and to figure out where that help is needed. You know, the fifth is to start evaluating different ideas or projects. You know, you really have to weigh the costs and benefits against different ideas, but it falls back on that first point, your vision and your values you're gonna weigh those heavily in how are you gonna choose one idea over another idea. And uh, pro tip, typically the idea you wanna pursue is not in your best interest, it just falls in your comfort zone. So you're tempted to do something that you enjoy versus something you need to do. The scenario that you're describing is you're grinding in the day to day, you're involved in too many things, you're running around, and now you're asking me to like, okay, go back, figure out where is those bottlenecks? How do I do that? Like, what's the practical process? 
right? So it's incumbent on every leader to take time to think strategically. And, you know, life and startups are all about balance, right? So you have to balance the strategy with the tactical. It's taking, you know, five, 10% of your time consistently every week, if not every day, and thinking about the big picture. So it's going back to that vision. This is where we want the company to be. And then it's what are the big pieces missing now that are going to hinder us from reaching that place in a couple of years. And then from there, it should be somewhat obvious what the big pieces are. And, you know, I'm obviously biased here, but I feel like you reach out to other experts and you say, oh, like I'm missing a sales component or I'm missing a product component or whatever that is, you start to get opinions. And I always say, get three to five opinions of people who are impartial because they're not going to be as wedded to the success today. They're not going to be as fearful of your cash flow today. They're really looking at your strategic best interests and giving you advice. I love this. And I agree. Again, I think you touched on two very critical components. One is blocking time, literally on your calendar. And the other thing, which is so, so important is having that external feedback loop. And this could be in the shape of a paid consultant or coach or a fractional additional role. This could be by establishing your own little support group, right? Find three other four friends because then you have somebody who's an outsider, who is a fresh mind, who likes you and wants you to be successful. And that can give you real good feedback as an external person to do this. Having that external feedback loop. And this could be in the shape of a paid consultant or coach, a fractional additional role. This could be by establishing your own little support group, right? You have somebody who's an outsider, who is a fresh mind, who likes you and wants you to be successful. And that can give you real good feedback as an external person to do this. So it doesn't have to be a paid thing. The benefit, obviously, a paid thing is, is people like you come with processes and methodologies on how to do this in the most effective way. But the more important aspect is actually having that external feedback loop. Do you agree? Yeah, I totally agree. Adam Grant is an organizational psychologist, and he talks about what's called the challenge network. So I want to distinguish that from a support network. The support network are people who believe in you no matter what, your family, your friends, no matter what your faults or failures, they say, you're a great person. We support you. We want you to do well. And that's awesome. We all need that. The challenge network is there not to always pat you on the back, but to really push you to the best ideas, the best performance possible. So they do support you in your long-term goals, but in the immediate conversation, they might be really tough on you. It might be a real pain in the ass, but they have your best interests in mind as they're pushing you to think through some of these issues. And to your point, yeah, you don't need to bring me on. I'd love to work with you, uh, but you don't need to bring me on to have that challenge network. You can build that on your own, but it involves people who they, you might not even like them per se, but they have your best interests at heart and you respect them for that and you want to hear from them. A lot of stuff is done digital and people kind of like find it very normal to not have people in the office next to them. I assume that opens a lot of doors for that opportunity, right? That's right. It creates a broader reach, but also something interesting that COVID did that you made me think about is it's really helped us to focus not just on whether or not I like the person who's sitting next to me, but what are the outcomes of that person's work, right? Because now like you and I might've gone along wonderfully sitting next to each other, but now this digital dependency is really based on outcomes. And if you're not doing your job and I can't move forward or I'm not pulling my weight, you're going to know right away. Whereas before it's like, oh, he's not doing his thing, but we had a great lunch. It's harder to come to terms with what's happening at work. Whereas now that's happening faster. So coming back to your point, founders are, are more open to fractional leadership, knowing that it's going to be outcome-based. I love it. It's brilliant. Listen, I, I've managed teams, remote teams, all my professional career. Those who are worked with me through the years and have been on my teams know that I told them always, like, if you've done what you needed to do at the quality I needed you, I prefer you'd be on the beach drinking margaritas than spending more time in the office. I, I am. I, I think that's the right mindset as a leader. And as long as, like you're saying, as long as there's an agreement that this is the required outcome, this is the quality, this is the quantity of things that needs to happen. Why do I care where you're working and how many hours? 
So I, I totally agree with you that the mindset shift that is happening today is very, very healthy for companies. You've been in companies as one of the founders and as one of the people working in the startup, and now you're from the outside coming into more than a few companies. How much does it increase your chances of success if you are bringing the right external team to help you out? Right. So there are two ways to look at it. And I'm going to talk about fractional resources across the board, not just myself. Sure. Uh, so one is exponential growth. And the second is mitigating risk. Two opposite metrics, if you will, although ultimately they come together because it's the same success. But exponential growth, if you're hiring a fractional CTO, a fractional CRO, you're really looking to exponentially move forward in your product progress or in your product market fit, then you should be able to measure that pretty clearly. And you want to make sure that whoever you bring in is going to meet those expectations. The other side of risk mitigation, that's a lot harder. That's where, you know, someone like you, someone like me has seen so many companies fail for unexpected reasons, bringing in the wrong team, not hiring fast enough, not recognizing the market as it was going in a somewhat different direction. All of these are hard to measure if you mitigate those risks. And I find that a lot of my clients are second time founders or founders who've been at this a while because they can recognize the risks involved of not proactively addressing some of these issues. Brilliant. The ability to track stuff is critical for every business. But I think you're touching on a point that is very important, that there's stuff you cannot track because you don't want it to happen. If you take the right steps, there's nothing to track. So the idea of uh, fractional leadership really comes through exponential thinking and building companies. You know, we, we see scale in other ways on the product side and on system side, but this is really thinking about your team in a fractional model where you know, we've seen it before with, say, designers or developers, but now we're looking at leadership and we're saying, okay, I know this company is ready to grow. I need a thought partner and how to make that happen. I need the expertise, but I can't necessarily afford it right now. And I'm looking at ways to really propel this company forward as quickly as possible. And this is where fractional leadership comes in. We recognize that whether it's your strength or an area of improvement as a founder, by bringing in somebody else, you're going to have an additional or you know, heavy perspective on how to grow out, and you're going to be able to make these things happen exponentially faster. And you know, from a fr fractional leader, you may decide to go to a full-time role within six months to a year, or you may you know, like the way that it's working now and keep it for a couple of years. But either way, you're getting that immediate infusion of expertise versus, you know, going through months of a rigorous process, you know, trying to find the right candidate, both on experience and on fit.